Hello and welcome to Star Citizen. My name is Even Lease, and today on 10 Minutes or Less Ship Review, I'm going to be taking a look at the Cutlass Blue, a law enforcement patrol ship by Drake. Let's go ahead and get into it. Now, starting off with the Drake Cutlass Blue here, this ship is one of the, the variants of the base Cutlass. Now, this one is meant for prisoner transport and bounty hunting, or law enforcement, or pretty much anything to do with capturing somebody and putting them in a prisoner pod, or potentially going to a prison and transferring a prisoner. And I'll show you why in just a moment. But first, like always, we're going to start with the exterior. And just like with any Drake vessel you're going to already see right from the get-go, this ship is held together by duct tape and just has a lot of uh, exterior-looking pipes and just... It's a blue-collar ship for sure. Uh, it's definitely a ship that's meant probably for, you know, the crowd that doesn't want to pay for it but probably wants to steal it. The Drake Cutlass Blue has a paint job on it that really hides some of the normal, uh, you know, attributes of the Drake Cutlass, and that is that it's not <laughs> ugly, right? <laughs> and don't get me wrong, the Cutlass really isn't ugly per se, but I feel like the Cutlass Blue has a lot more panels on it that makes it look at least a little bit more put together, which is good because it's used as a law enforcement vessel, as you can see by the red and blue all over it. Now those red and blue lights, you cannot activate separate of the headlights, so anytime you hit the headlights with the L key, you will be activating those red and blues, and they are all over the ship. It's a pretty cool effect, but you know, if they could separate the two someday, that would be also really cool. Now starting off with the weapons, this ship does come with four pilot controlled guns and it comes out to 1551 dps stock but that's because two of the guns are ballistic gatling guns now those guns are two size two scorpion gt 215s and that's why a lot of that dps comes into play now the other two guns that come stock on this is the xj2 distortion repeaters which as of re recently they got a temporary nerf uh, I think they're having a little bit of trouble trying to figure out where distortions are going to fit in the verse because uh, prior to 3.22.1, distortions were a nightmare and ended fights way too soon, honestly. Um, so it'll be interesting to see where that goes. And you could, you know, potentially say that the DPS of this ship is only so high because of those two Gatling guns, which is true, but also those Gatling guns have a very limited ammo amount. So. More than likely, until they get a buff on the amount of ammo they can carry, you're going to probably swap over to some sort of laser repeaters, probably on both those uh, sets of weapons. But, talking about stock, you also do get 24 size 2 Tempest 2 missiles, which I know a lot of people will swap out for size 1 because then you can carry about double the amount. <laughs> but having 24 of those missiles is quite insane. And then as you can see on the top of the ship, just like most Drake, if not all Drake cutlasses, you have the turret on the top, which comes stock with two size 3 CF-337 Panthers, which those are great guns. So there you go. Those are awesome. And honestly, if you were to discuss upgrades for the pilot controlled weapons, just get rid of the gimbals and put size 3 guns there. And there you go. You got yourself quite the weapons package on here, which I know a lot of people do. One of the biggest weaknesses of this ship is the fact that these engine nacelles are very easy to destroy. And once they're destroyed, it makes this ship very hard to operate and fly around and do anything with. So using this ship for PvP isn't is impossible. A lot of people do it, especially since this ship has a QED device, which is called a quantum dampener which allows you to stop people from running away from a fight, which is quite amazing. 
Now, with that, you just gotta be careful about getting hit because they are very easy to lose the engines, and once they do, you will have to probably retreat. Now, this ship, moving on into the interior, does have 12 holding cells for those prisoners, but before you get to those holding cells, you do have a small cargo bay back here. The jump seats originally in the Cutlass are now gone, and it holds 12 SCU of cargo. And in particular, I think you're going to see a lot of your, you know, component access probably show up around here sooner or later. But again, you just don't have that access as of right now. Now, these are your prisoner transport pods. And I'm kind of uncertain how you're going to be able to take these off of these rails. Because obviously you got to be able to take them off, put them here, and bring them out of the ship. And I really don't see how well that's going to work or even how this is going to work with a lot of these railings here, how you're going to turn on that rail. It, it, this, the whole area here is probably going to have to get a redesign on how that operates. We might see bounty hunting features get updated this year, but there's already a lot on the table of 3.23, so it's not really a big deal if these don't get hit yet. Now... We're in the interior of the ship. You do see the primary change of the Cutlass Blue compared to the other Cutlasses, including that QED device. Well, you only have one shield. It's a size two, but it gives you 9,000 front and back shield, which is pretty decent. It's actually quite a bit of shield. And then you do have 33,172 health points. Now this ship does have a living quarters just like the other Cutlasses, where you do have storage access on the left for your pilot and co-pilot. And then you also have weapon racks here, and you have two beds and a turret. Surprisingly enough, this ship has three seats, a pilot, a co-pilot, and a turret, yet only two beds, two storage containers, and a multitude of weapons racks for all the weapons you want to keep. Yet the competitor, well, the competitor to the, you know, the base cut list, the freelancer, has a crew of four, with four beds and four of everything else, it just seems like I feel like they're missing a bed, they're missing a storage locker. I feel like this could be a three-man ship, especially given the fact that this one, the Cutlass Blue, is a prisoner transport. But, you know, some would disagree. A lot of people like operating these ships solo, even though with a second person, that turret added is just devastating on this ship. So, always good to run this one with two. Now, this ship also has 2,500 quantum fuel, so if you need to jump the distance, you can definitely do that. Now, outside of all of everything I've just said, that's the Drake Cutlass Blue. It is a quantum dampening ship. Now, would I pick this one over the Scorpius Antares? Yes, I would, because this ship doesn't require, you know, a second person to operate that QED device. Looking at what you do have available for your weapons, you do have 295 rounds in the Scorpion guns each, and then you have 120 rounds in the capacitor for the XJ2s each. Now, upgrading those guns, you will definitely get some different capacitor ratios with whatever guns you put on there. And as you can see, as previously discussed, the front and back shields, you do have 48 decoys and 5 noise. Now the QE the, the QD device or QED device is hard to, you know, get to turn on and stuff. The button is just a pain to get to work, so it is something they definitely need to work on. It's not impossible, but it is there, and all you have to do is just activate it in the power settings, and then from there, you can just go ahead and turn it on. Now, outside of that, you do have your rockets, of course, and you do have 24 of them usually. I shot off quite a few of them. And you do have VTOL thrusters, so right now they are deployed. If you press K, they will go ahead and go back up. So, looks pretty cool. Now, reviewing this ship has been quite interesting for me. Flying it has also been interesting. I found that it's just, it, it has a lot of the same issues as the other cutlasses available with those engines and just how easy it is to disable them. If you're not a master at circle strafing or avoiding certain type of fire, you could definitely lose your ship quite quick in this. What would I give this ship as a rating just due to certain things like that? And as a stock rating, honestly, I'm going to be sitting at a 7 out of 10. And that is just because there is a lot of functions in this ship that just aren't presently available. So you do take away a lot. You do take away quite a bit um, moving from a regular cutlass to this ship because of the fact that you lose cargo, you lose space for vehicles. And you gain things that are just right now like a Christmas tree. It's just ornaments in the back. 
and with limited cargo you do have the qed but again it's a struggle to operate and also the qed gives you a crime stat if you are not targeting somebody with a uh, crime stat already so it's kind of like an operate at your own risk because you operate that thing and you are going after somebody with crime stat and then somebody without a crime stat jumps in now you got a crime stat it turns into a nightmare and it's situational absolutely situational so would I pick this ship over a regular Cutlass? Probably not, personally, in its current state. It down the line, once a lot more things come operational with it, for sure. But as of right now, I do give this ship a 7 out of 10. And I know there are a lot of people out there that love this ship, and there's definitely nothing wrong with that. Some people would rate it a 10, some people would rate it a 2. Let me know what you think of this ship down in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.